Hi guys, excited for this new episode? Today we're continuing the mini-series of Mosaka and its Italian counterpart, the Parmigiana. There are a few variations and many debates about where in Italy Parmigiana comes from. Today I'll show you what I've learned from my grandmother Nicoletta and also a different and lighter version with courgettes. Let me tell you what parmigiana is. It's a baked Italian dish made with fried sliced aubergines layered with mozzarella cheese, basil leaves and tomato sauce. Start by slicing the aubergine, sprinkle them with salt and leave them aside for one hour to lose the excess water. Can you see it? This is just after 10 minutes. I left them overnight to cook faster and absorb less oil. Let's prepare the tomato sauce. Pour some extra virgin olive oil in the pan along with half finely chopped red onion and toss it until soft. Season with some black pepper, then add the tomato sauce, a few leaves of basil and a generous sprinkle of sea salt. Cover it with the lid and cook it at low heat for 40 minutes. Back to the aubergine. Use a kitchen towel to pat dry the aubergines from the excess water. There are so many different ways of preparing parmigiana, depending on which part of Italy you come from. In Sicily, for instance, it seems like they are not coating the aubergines at all, like what Sara did for M. Moussaka. No surprise that Sicilian food has inherited loads of characteristics from the Middle East. On the contrary, the Napolitan version, which I believe we were influenced with in Apulia, is the one I'm making right now. So coat the sliced aubergine with plenty of flour and tap the excess off. Then dip it in the egg and milk mixture and then fry it. Aubergine is now widespread on the tables of our homes, but which only arrived in Italy in the 15th centuries thanks to Arab traders who brought them to Sicily by importing them from India, becoming a common ingredient in the typical cuisine of Italy, Greece and many other countries. When it comes to frying, there are lots of misconceptions, but basically it all boils down to the ratio between the food that you're frying, the amount of oil, its temperature and the size of the pot, making the final dish more or less heavy. As for many of you who might find parmigiana heavy for all the frying, I wanted to show you a lighter version of the dish, but this time I will make it with courgettes instead of aubergines. Start by preparing the sauce, cut the tomatoes in quarters, put some olive oil in the pan, add the minced garlic and fry on low heat for 2 minutes. Then add black pepper, the capers and toss for another 2 minutes. Followed by tomatoes sun dried tomatoes, salt, and cover it for 15 minutes. I wanted the sauce to have different textures which will give a nice bite to the whole dish and capers will add some acidity to balance the flavors. Now cut the courgettes lengthwise in half centimeter thick and grill them until they have a nice color. Sprinkle them with salt and leave them aside. Not only Emilia Romagna and Sicily are contending for the origins of Parmigiana, the city of Naples also claims the birthplace of this famous dish. The hypothesis that Parmigiana was born in Naples derives from the book Cuoco Galante, written in the 18th century by Vincenzo Corrado, a cook employed by the most prominent aristocratic families in Naples. The recipe described in this book, however, is very far from the original Parmigiana. In fact, not aubergines, but courgettes were used and seasoned with butter and parmesan. Cut the fresh mozzarella into little cubes. If you can find it fresh, feel free to use shredded mozzarella of your choice and let's build our dishes. For the 
Parmigiana always start by adding some tomato sauce at the bottom. Actually, the word Parmigiana comes from the Sicilian language Parmigiana, which should be recalling the window shutters and, you know, all the wooden slats overlap. So as you can see here, when we build the Parmigiana, we are creating those overlapping layers of fried aubergines. Then another layer of sauce, Parmesan cheese, mozzarella and a generous amount of fresh basil leaves and repeat. The use of an ingredient such as Parmigiano Reggiano, from which according to many the name of the dish derives, leads some people to think that its origin in Emilia-Romagna. Historical sources date back to the 15th century. The expression cooking in the Parmesan way used in the cookbooks of that time to indicate the preparation of recipes based on layered vegetables, very popular in the cuisine of Parman area. It should be noted that the use of Parmesan cheese in the recipe probably only took place at a later stage, as an alternative in an already established recipe that involved the use of caciocavallo. And for the courgette parmigiana, add a layer of the chunky tomato sauce, followed by a layer of grilled courgettes, a drizzle of olive oil, grated pecorino cheese, some dried oregano and mozzarella cheese, then repeat. As courgette is a mild and mellow taste, I needed to boost the flavors a little bit more by adding pecorino cheese instead of parmesan. Pecorino is more prominent and slightly more salty. It's made from sheep milk, which gives it its distinctive buttery nutty taste. I also used oregano, as I know it will fit perfectly with the aroma of garlic and the acidity of the capers. The name Parmigiana, in fact, could mostly derive from the Arabic word al badinjan and in the Semitic languages, P and B are pronounced in the same way. Well, it's really hard to get to the origin of a famous dish as each country will add it its own unique ingredients to it to give its characteristics. Bake your dishes and enjoy the taste of Italy. When I was recording, <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> I was dying of the lovely smell and the scenes, of course. Let me zoom in. Wow, look, look at this. this. Yeah. Look at that. See the layers? Wow. Mm. This is mind blowing. <laughs> Amazing! Wow, Stefano, this is second level, like a totally different level. Let me try this beauty here, just completely different taste. This should be the lighter version? Yeah, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Thank this you. This one is super, <laughs> it's a different story. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. The flavors are amazing explosion of flavors in my mouth sweetness and a bit of um, vinegar of the um, of the caper of the capers yeah gives a kick a nice kick fantastic i'm an aubergine lover so for me this is heaven <laughs> <laughs> but i also love i really love projects it's a surprise for me well it's even for me i mean i'm going to try it's the first time that i've done it with this kind of seasoning, so I'm really curious to know how it's going to happen. Okay, let me put some for you. Thank you. You know, are the flavors that I was expecting. I kind of took inspiration to a dish that my mother does, which is called macaroncino alla siciliana, funny enough. Which has got those kind of like tomato, capers, oregano combination with the garlic. So I said, why not to do something like different on this level and I try to season in this way and it actually works very well. It's amazing. Mm. This is 
This I is like super. it because it's not over seasoned. Like. This is super and spot on, and uh, the seasoning is just perfect. Well done. Thank you, Nonna, for teaching me. Thank you, Nonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys. Like all the times, this is the end. I hope you did enjoy the show and what we prepared for you and also the variant of the Parmigiana today. I guess you did. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love both of them. Please give it a go. Amazing stuff. Yeah, you should give it a go. So guys, subscribe to our channel. Like and share. And continue to support us on Patreon. We really did appreciate your support so far. Ciao. Bye bye. bye. See you in the next episode. <laughs>